basically as part of my marine biology research I've been studying algae for the last I don't know five eight years something like that um, and I've all my research has been aimed at understanding um, how algae respond to climate change and so recently there's been a realization so recently in terms of the last sort of five years that a lot of the particles and a lot of the um, the contaminants if you like on the ice sheet that are darkening the ice sheet as well as being made up of these organic and inorganic particles they're actually algae as well so this is quite a big revelation that actually there's a lot of pigmented algae that live on the ice sheet um, and because of their pigments uh, that they use for photosynthesis um, this is darkening the ice sheet and this is contributing to the reduction in the albedo which leads to the melt so um, the guys in Bristol when they're setting up this big black and bloom project thought to themselves well we should probably get somebody who knows about algae which is where I come into it so um, a lot of my expertise is to do with photosynthesis um, and understanding what we call photoacclimation or photochemistry and um, so how algal species are responding uh, to the irradiance that they get and particularly how they use their pigments to um, sort of harvest the light that they need but also protect themselves from too much light and that has a really strong link with the Greenland ice sheet and the albedo and the melt because a lot of the UV absorbing pigments that they make um, in these sort of high latitude environments where you have a lot more of UV stress and um, they're the ones that are, are quite dark, quite dark pigments um, and they're the ones that seem to be contributing a lot to the albedo effect, the bio albedo. Um, so I've been brought in to come and work on the microbiology, not just the algae, also the bacteria that live um, in the environment, uh, to see who's there, see what they're doing, how productive they are, um, what's controlling their, uh, their growth and their distribution, um, how productive, and then definitely to look at their pigments. The argument is that, that there is life wherever there is liquid water. Okay, and so we're getting this, this melting of the Greenland ice sheet, which happens normally in a sort of annual cycle. We always have the accumulation and the ablation zone, which melts um, when summer temperatures go above freezing. But with sort of things like climate change, um, as temperatures tend to rise, and as things like deposition of more of the black particles, which are not the algae, uh, onto the ice tend to increase, we're sort of getting a, a larger area of meltwater. So that's sort of giving a, a larger area of liquid water where life can uh, survive and can prosper and grow. So then overall, it, it would make sense that the, the amount of ice algae on the, on the ice sheet will be increasing. Okay, so there's more meltwater because of things like global warming. There's more of an area for the algae to survive in and grow in. And then this is sort of self-perpetuating. So they then darken the, um, the ice sheet that creates more melt. We get more melt water for them to thrive in. Um, so things like the dark zone along the western edge of the Greenland ice sheet, you might, for example, expect that to increase into the future. And you might expect then the, the melt that the bioalbedo and the dark particles cause to also increase into the future.